Third passages are A, B, set. Passage A, Fernando, I'm glad you asked about this because I was hoping to talk to you about this very thing. Passage A thinks that evolutionary psychology is providing us with an answer about behavior. It is for the propagation of species, right? Um, <clears throat> passage B is skeptical. Passage B says, you know, and, and puts that skepticism in plain, clear terms at the end. Uh, end of that second passage. Are they right? Maybe yes. Maybe no. All right. So the main point of passage A is that psychological experiences explain our the evolution of behavior. Uh, answer choice E, an evolutionary explanation of behavior may lie in psychological states. Pretty good. For 14, how do the two authors feel about evolutionary psychology? Well, passage A says it provides us the answer. It, the answer probably lies in evolutionary psychology. Passage B, again, skeptical. Maybe yes, maybe no. Uh, passage A is more committed to the principles than the author of passage B is. Yes. Passage A thinks it's probably right. Passage B, not so sure. For 15, I will point you to line 50. Evolutionary psychologists take this as evidence that humans form monogamous families because of our interest in propagating our genes. Answer to C, we form monogamous families. That is right there. Passage B said it, and that's how we know it's the right answer. For 16, why did passage A say certain types of human behavior developed? I will point you to the top of the third paragraph. Because human ancestors lived in small kin-based groups, the application of altruistic mechanisms to the entire group would have promoted the propagation of the genes responsible for those mechanisms. Yeah, it would have helped spread the genes responsible. That's, that's propagation, yo. 17 is just asking 14 all over again. How does B relate to A? A takes the arguments of evolutionary psychology as being probable answers. B asks questions about it and says uh, it's a conspiracy theory. Um, these arguments can appear persuasive on their face, but B exists to poke holes in the theory that A accepts. The author of B seeks to undermine the type of argument made in A by suggesting it relies on questionable reasoning. What's the questionable reasoning? That whole last paragraph, right? That Yes, thing Y might explain your behavior, but maybe also thing X, just wanting to do thing X, explains your behavior. And that's the conspiracy theory portion. Uh, 18, I think we already answered in looking at 17, but we were kind of talking about the last part of passage B and just in explaining that conspiracy theory. Let's talk about the first part of passage B. Uh, it's a kind of conspiracy theory. But what do you mean by that? Well, in line 39, what seemed like your unsurprising interest in your child's well-being turns out not to be about your child at all. It turns out to be the conspiracy among your genes to propagate the species. That's the conspiracy theory. The idea that your genes are somehow hidden agents of change. Uh, or D, the genes may promote their self-propagation through actions that appear unselfish. Like, looks like you're interested in your child's success, but really, are you? In 19, if you want to talk about what the author of B thinks is wrong with arguments made in A, it's that the possibility that this explanation might explain the behavior doesn't mean that it is the explanation for the behavior. I'm in the last paragraph of passage B, uh, say in line 56, what's needed to make it decisive is that the behavior would be reasonable only if you had that interest. Just having that interest is not enough to mean that interest is the reason for your behavior. Uh, I'm in line 60. An interest in Y might explain doing X, but so too would an interest in doing X. So the author of passage A seems to believe that because you can explain behavior through evolutionary psychology, evolutionary psychology is then enough to actually be the explanation. Passage B says, well, you could explain it that way, but that doesn't necessarily mean that you're right. I'll also point out that answer choice B here would certainly be something that the passage B would dis dispute or disagree with. 
But ain't nobody in passage A making an argument based on answer choice B. They do, however, make arguments based on answer choice C. They do seem to think that we can explain this behavior simply because the behavior would have improved the reproductive success. That is to say, it is one possible cause. The fact that the behavior would improve reproductive success is one possible cause, and so we've acted like that is the cause, like that's enough to know. Passage B says, nah, -uh, that's not enough. You'd need to know that it was not just one possible cause, but the only cause. And that finishes off this third A-B set. So here's the deal with these free videos. They're intended to serve a very narrow purpose. For those times when you're wondering, why is that the right answer? You can just come here for a complete library and find out why it was the right answer. And I hope that you'll find that it was very instructive. Of course, the other part of the deal is that since LSAC publishes all of their tests along with test keys, that means that there's no barrier to entry for test prep. And you can hear the air quotes, I hope. Anybody can, and lots of people have, set up shop and call themselves test prep companies. And they've got the questions, they've got the answer keys, and they just try to explain to you why the right answer is right. And then they charge you money for it? That is wrong. I want to put a stop to it. I want to sweep the legs right out from under them. It is bad for you. It's bad for me, too. So if you want to know what the right answer is and why the right answer is right, I want you to be able to come here and find it out for free without paying anybody for it. That's very different from what I do in the paid course. What I think has a value about what I do is that I can tell you ahead of time what every question wants from you, what to expect from the right answer, how to formulate a right answer, and then how you can expect wrong answers to sound so that you know before you ever open up a test book exactly what to expect. And all the practice videos that are part of the paid course are just me putting that theory into practice. It's just the rubber meeting the road. In other words, I'm going to show you, based on what we've done before, how we're going to react when it comes up next time. And that bit, knowing what to do the next time you see something, that I think is worth paying for. And if you agree, I'd love to have you in the course. And if not, that's fine too. Don't pay anybody to explain why right answers are right. Just watch these for free. Enjoy. <laughs>